All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page, hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. So today we're going to be reacting to somebody exposing Dr. Umar for the uh, black brother fraud he is sometimes. Uh, look, man, we got a special guest on, Sean P. We'll be back. What's good, y'all? Who raised you? Oh my god, this dude is so hard. Oh my god. That last bar was crazy. Oh my god. Uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves, you know? That's why they have parents. Oh, eat each other. What? Yo, I yeah, can't I understand it neither. I right, look, man, sketch pad. So this is what we're going to do, man. We're going to play the clip and we're going to come back and react to this clip here. So let's get it, man. See what this guy got to say about uh, Dr. Umar. Hello again and welcome back to another one. And today we have more on the ongoing drama that got Eminem trending on social media since Christmas. All thanks to a recent episode on the Joe Budden podcast that featured Dr. Umar. And during his rant about Eminem, he made a statement that set things off. As this has led to a session online where users on the web are pulling up receipts and more. And to be honest, the doctor opened a can of worms with this one as he's been getting exposed as a quote scammer as a result of this. And just before we dive in, we have some interesting updates on Eminem's latest feature on Juice World's Lace It as it debuted on this week's Hot 100 in the United States at number 86. And it has finally broken into Eminem's top 10 most popular songs right now on Spotify at number 10 at the moment. It is number 3 for Juice World and number 2 for Benny Blanco at the moment. And it is currently number 1 on Snapchat's most popular songs list. And moving on to the main topic today, Dr. Umar opened the floodgates with this one when he claimed For you to what put I him think? at the top, that's, 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 that's white supremacy, bro. That's white supremacy. What's white culture? I don't see Eminem yeah. building no so schools and hospitals. I don't see DJ Khaled building no schools and hospitals. I don't see DJ Vlad building no damn bets in supermarkets. Yo, I'm asking Vlad. Hell no. Let me ask you a question. Ain't no... And this was all some users needed to hear on social media to start pulling up receipts to expose the doctor for being an alleged stammer. Always repeating itself. Always predictable. For being an alleged scammer and many Eminem fans didn't come with feelings, they came with receipts as a user pulled up a whole decade worth of data linked to Eminem's work in the Detroit community via the Marshall Matters Foundation. It goes, Marshall Matters Foundation contributions and grants to help Detroit, Michigan and its surrounding communities 2011 to 2021. And would you look at that, ice cold facts, objective data, charts, spreadsheets, and in 2020, due to the situation around the world, charitable disbursements reached $1.3 million. Most of these donations were to provide aid focused on impoverished children. He also gives out for merch sales among other things. And if you know how many merch bundles we got in 2023, you know it is no joke. And users on the web set their sights on Dr. Umar since he opened this can of worms to find out what he's given out to the community and the exposing session begun. As in response to the receipts provided, a user expanded, Omar has been collecting donations for about the same period of time. Therefore, Eminem has literally given more to the community than Omar, who has simply taken more. So while Eminem was given out, Omar was allegedly taken out. And from Tony the Closer, talk is cheap, building matters, years into promises of a school, and still nothing. What is the real impact of Dr. Umar's words? Let's evaluate on tangible contributions, not eloquent speeches, when this building getting completed, and he had more to add. Umar may speak well to some of y'all, but the proof is in the work. Here's his school that he has got donations on for over a decade, all talk. And here's some snippets from the video. 
It has not been renovated. I'm gonna get up here and give you all a tour of FDMG. I'm giving you guys a tour. This is the back of FDMG. Right? The school is renovated to you. Nothing about this school is renovated. Nothing's been done here. Look at the door. He said the sprinkler system was taken care of, right? He said the sprinkler system was done. That's the sprinkler door. No new st stickers, nothing. I don't know if you can see his spider webs in those windows. Same shit, it's all boarded up. He's done nothing. Look at the doors, everything is boarded up. The mailbox isn't even fucking, a new mailbox is not even on there. He hasn't done anything out here. Look at this shit. Even Vlad contributed to expose him since he called him out by name and Vlad posted this reminder on Twitter. Dr. Omar Johnson mm -hmm. took donations for school seven years ago, still hasn't opened. And talk about opening a can of worms. Omar been raising money for a decade. Someone needs to ask him what he has done financially for the community other than buying an abandoned building. The community has an issue with valuing words more than actions because Umar himself has two black baby moms out of wedlock, taking millions from the community without a return, but still walks around acting like some moral standard because he speaks well. And for those who believe he speaks well, some have expanded. Omar got two black baby mamas and not married to either of them, but he's the standard for black consciousness. He only sounds intelligent to dumb dudes. And when it comes to Eminem changing the lives of people from the community, this was pulled up from Tony Yayo. Who did M put on? G-Unit, D12, Slaughterhouse, Joe Buttons and them, right. and Griselda. Is it matter at the white boy because he's the black hockey player? Come on. Mm. Yo, his music Bro. don't play in the clubs. So that listen, don't make him the goat. Why having the ball? Nigga? I know. <laughs> Why did this hate Eminem? Because he's white. Because he's, he's white. white. That's it. It's clear. He's white. Now we got down with Eminem. We done been called house nigga, all this, that. But at the end of the day, ain't nobody in my hood. My family wore free Yale shirt at the Grammys and look out for me. And it goes deeper as more receipts have been pulled on the doctor. A video <clears throat> that goes, Dr. Omar Johnson. Mm -hmm. Pause. Hip hop is not black culture. And these tweets have since gone viral. Eminem has contributed more to black culture than Dr. Omar ever will. And he didn't ask for donations. And they kept dunking on the doctor. Eminem has done more for black people than this fake doctor. And we got more think pieces about Dr. Omar's stick. I don't respect Dr. Omar for a lot of reasons, but number one might be how he's always focused on other people, telling folks how they should spend their money, how to raise their kids, or who they should be in relationships with. You are not the authority on other people's lives. It is wild how Dr. Omar and El Jamar <laughs> share this in common. The self-proclaimed unelected speakers and directors of all black people in the world. And here's one to end it. Dr. Omar is a scamming clown who's never done nothing for the black community. He's nothing but a meme. It is hilarious people take him seriously. And now that you've heard from users on social media, I'll be looking forward to your thoughts in the comments. And we have more on this grammar coming up in a few hours so be sure to subscribe if you haven't thanks for watching and see one of y'all could go first because i'm gonna go in on this dude so we want to go first. <laughs> yeah sure you go first <laughs> well i know uh reese is warming up <clears throat> um pardon me i'm a little bit under the weather tonight but um uh they actually didn't play the whole clip about this but uh, what it really stems from is when Joe Buttons on the Joe Buttons podcast asked if uh, you think Eminem is one of the greatest rappers of all time. And mm -hmm. he went off on the narrative that because black is not, that because Eminem is not African, he can never be the greatest at anything that is um, derived from Afro-Americans or African culture. You know, he, and if you say he's the best, and we actually play that in a clip. You, you're clip. You're a white supremacist, you know. So he goes way off of the deep end. But my whole thing is first with the whole narrative of, you know, uh, because hip hop is ours, 
and for black culture, you know, for black people, black Americans created by black Americans that uh, for some reason, you know, uh, white America is, is trying to steal it away, you know, because the, the there's the, the broken story of how they took rock and roll for us, which, which really wasn't true because um, Elvis was influenced by many black, you know, uh, rock and roll artists, but Elvis was needed to bring uh, rock and roll to the mainstream because Elvis was almost canceled in bands when he, he started out. People don't say that. And people don't talk about how um, we owned basically R&B and soul music. And we started that with Motown and white America never took that, uh, uh, took that away from us. You know what I mean? So he needs to check his his facts where really, if you ask me, uh, not me, but you could make the, the legitimate argument that pop culture and white music culture, basically, you know, uh, you know, they came to us and need black America to survive. I mean, once MJ, Michael Jackson came around in the 80s, it was over. You know what I mean? Because after that, uh, to be a pop star, it doesn't matter what color you were, you know, and uh, I also go to, you know, the situation where uh, Taylor Swift, who I would say is, you would agree, maybe the biggest pop star in the world right now. So my question is, so when she does a feature with Ice Spice or she does a feature with Kendrick Lamar, Who's the one that's going to benefit off of that the most? It's going to be the hip hop artist because as she's the greatest or the biggest hip hop star in the world, you know, Ice Spice and Kendrick Lamar, they're going to grow their fan base because in, in predominantly hip hop fan bases, they listen to mostly hip hop and R&B. They don't really venture out in the pop. I mean, maybe today more so than, than that, but they're going to grow their fan bases. So the pop stars today, they're coming to hip hop now because hip hop is the biggest genre in the world. So I don't really know what uh, Umar is getting at because he really needs to check his facts when it comes to the music realm of it, which I don't think he knows anything about hip hop music, the hip hop culture. And I think that's the reason why Joe Buttons and the people on his podcast kind of looked at him like he had eight heads because it's like, who is this weird guy going off and he doesn't know anything about music culture? Yeah. Um, has Umar ever been to Africa? Have you ever seen any pictures no of idea. Umar in Africa? Never seen that. That's the question <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he always talk about African this and African that. I'll be honest with you. I I like Umar, but I I look at Umar as the nigga in the hood who just talk a lot and always trying to tell you what you should do. And his house is fucked up. Like his house is just like terrible. You go in his crib, he got bugs everywhere. He got beer cans all over. But outside, he's trying to tell you, nah, you got to do it like this, bro. You doing it wrong. You got to do it this way. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at Umar. Now, what, what people don't understand is that that tells you that Eminem's the best. If he could come into a, a, a different genre, whether, whether, whether you say because he's black or white and he dominates by, by putting words together better than you, I mean, that just, that's the testament of how great he really is. If you ask me, I mean, who's better at putting words together than him? He... Eminem literally created new ways of rapping. Literally. And, and to this day, people can't even emulate it. You know what I'm saying? So for him to say some of the things he was saying about Eminem, it's just it's mind blowing to me for you to say, how can you be? St There's plenty of. OK, so let's take it to sports, right? Basketball wasn't created by black people, but who's the best in basketball right now? <laughs> football too you know what i'm saying it was when i from what i uh, looked up it wasn't not one black player on that field and now 
black people dominate all the sports. So my thing with him is he, he we are all humans. Humans can excel better than other humans. Now, if you want to say it's the culture, how can you be better at something at the culture? Okay, that's fine. All right, that's your, that's your opinion. But overall, I mean, there's some people that would excel better than others. That's just how it is. Has nothing to, to me really has nothing to do with the culture. It's just if somebody's good at something, then what can you really say to that? And if he say Eminem's not the best, I could I could say okay, I could I could understand why he would say he's not the best. But him for him to say he's not one of the best, that's yeah. crazy to me. Because Eminem is the reason why hip hop is global. If you ask me, like he's clearly. The reason why, you know what I'm but saying? But he took it a step further big. and said, "Yeah, hip hop was big." A, what you say? He took it a step further and said, "If you say he's the best, that's white supremacy." <laughs> that's where he went off the deep end. Like so, yeah, that's kind of that, that's kind of what I had a problem with when he said that. I was like, yeah. "Yo, he's wilding. He's wilding now. Like he's really wilding." Where did he Damn. get his education from? Was it a white school? I have no idea. Was it white supremacy then? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Is it I white supremacy know. when he takes them the uh takes the money to build the school from the banks? Like, listen, man, I, and I'm gonna let you go as this this is the biggest problem that I think we have in America, man. And we're, well, not necessarily in America, but this is the biggest problem I think we have. Is 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 there uh is there privileged people in America? Yes, but there's also a lot of poor people in America. You know what I'm saying? So people need to understand, man. Me, me and me and Sean and, and S, we traveled a lot. You know what I'm saying? We we we're one of those, we one of those the well, we these pe- these black people that we could say that we are kind of privileged because we did things more than probably a lot of people in certain states would never be able to do. You know what I'm saying? So I don't fall for the whole white supremacy thing no more because if us three wanted to pack up and leave today, we could and never come back if we wanted to. You know what I'm saying? We could literally change our lives. Some people can't do that. So I just think it's it is a certain level of uh how would I say this? Uh a certain level of of people living under a poverty line or whatever. Yeah, I get that. But at the same time, you have opportunities to get out of it if you wanted to. If you really wanted to, you could. So for him to say that is to me, I, I believe it's kind of disingenuous for him to say that Eminem, if you say Eminem is the best rapper, that's white supremacy. When we're talking about music, Eminem did yeah. more for the black community than you. So is he, was he being a part of white supremacy then? Should he not had did that because he's a white man and help black people? Is that what you consider white supremacy? When a white man helps a black person, like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like a white guy helping a black guy learn how to read. And you said, well, you shouldn't have taught him because that's white supremacy. Like, yeah, come it on. Make sense. It's, well, it well, makes sense. It's stupid. Well, he kind of said something like that in another interview. And there's another interview that he was, he, he specifically said that a white, white teachers cannot teach black children. Yes, that's what he, he did. said. I remember that. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said that. He, and I was like, say that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what is he talking about? So, like, I, 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 you know, I can't fathom in to understand what is wrong with this guy, man. Like, he, 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 he's the type of person he brings up like two or three good points, and then he goes into a whole nother realm that he shouldn't even be touching. And he started talking way off base. Cause when he said that, I was just like, oh yeah, he's 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 bugging out. He's bugging out. And and you write to somebody that, that don't really understand and is probably dumbfounded, he sounds pretty smart. I'm not saying he's not a well spoken person, he is, but oh, yeah. to a person that don't, you know, get their information and their facts together, he sounds pretty smart. And, he's what they and, call and, pseudo intellectual. Pseudo intellectual. Yes, he's 
absolutely a pseudo intellectual and he also is a person he's like a he's like a professor that speaks speaks to confuse you and you have to figure everything else out it confuses the pupils that's 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 <laughs> that, that's an interesting point you know what i'm saying that's that's yeah. the type of professor he would be you know what i'm saying he's, he's a teacher a like confuse he's the a, kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> confuse the people. Oh, he's the teacher. He's he's the teacher off the Peanuts cartoon. Wah, yeah. Wah, 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 yeah. Wah. Like, come on, bro. Like, I think it's like with him. Like, I listen, bro. I think he's very well spoken. Don't get me wrong, because I mean, if you practice long enough, you could be very well spoken. Anybody could do that. But is he giving you anything? of any substance because everything he's saying is just regurgitated stuff that other people said before. He just put it in his own way. Like who mm -hmm. so many people said we need to go back to Africa. <laughs> now you went to Africa, my, my, my black brother here, you were, you was in Africa. How did they treat you when you Three went there? Three times. How did they Three treat times, you when you went there? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was G, I was fine. I'm talking about the airport. Oh, you the story you told me. Oh man, <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. So, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, just imagine if we went there, and you from there, and you from here. We ain't from there. We we basically we basically house niggas. Not to say that Africans yeah, people. That's a whole other story. That's Black a whole other story. Another, another way. But I'm just saying, like for yeah. him to say that, I don't think I never seen him in Africa. Never seen any photos of him in Africa. Is he really trying to go back to Africa? Like, is he really trying to do that? Because me personally, and then on top of that, what part of Africa? There's, there's a bunch of countries in Africa. He always just say Africa. Like, what part? <laughs> Some of us not even from that this certain part that he probably is talking about. What part? I mean, so I don't know, man. I don't know. He's he 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 he. he I don't know. I don't know what to say about Umar no more, man. I think, I honestly, I believe that this is, I believe he's going to have some things to say, but I believe he picked, he barked up the wrong tree on this one. I think that yeah. this is probably the end of his, the end of him right here. Because they're going to come after him. Like, Eminem fans are crazy. There's two fans you don't mess with. Eminem fans and Beyonce fans. Yeah, don't mess with them. Because yeah. they'll look up the, the high school records and everything. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But it is what it is, man. But look, man, Sketchpad, we out of here. See y'all. Peace, man. Bye.